Support for this episode is provided by Van Dyke's Restorers. You can find a link to the veneer and drawer pulls used on this project down in the description below. Hi, and welcome back to the shop. I'm John Peters, and I'm calling this project a mid-century modern inspired writing desk. It's a relatively simple project in that it's basically a plywood box that's veneered with quarter sawn white oak veneer. The legs are shaped and tapered to give it that clean modern look and I think this desk would be a great addition to any home. In this step-by-step -step woodworking lesson, I'll show you everything you need to know that will help you build a beautiful piece of furniture for your home. If you'd like to build this desk or any of my woodworking projects, I'll have a link to the professional plans right here and down in the description below. Now let's go ahead and get to work. I'm building the majority of the desk out of three quarter inch birch plywood. And I got started on the project by first cross cutting a full sheet at 45 inches, which is a little heavier than the 44 I need. And then I used the table saw to clean up the cut on both sides. After that, I ripped the top and bottom at a rough width. And I'm going to get started on the parts for the back, the two sides, and the piece in the middle that will divide the drawers. I'll rip these parts at three and a half inches. I'll use this piece for the back of the desk, and since it's the off cut from when I cut the top and bottom, it's already cut to length at 44 inches. Next, I'll set up a stop block and cut the two sides and the center at 20 and 3 quarters. First, I'll square up one side of each board. I'll hang the square side off the workbench. That reminds me that this is the square side and the side that goes up against the stop block when I make the next cut. Now I'm ready to attach the two sides and the divider to the back of the desk. I've taken a little time to find the center and I'll attach these parts with two inch and a quarter nails just to tack the parts in place. And then I'll use one screw in the center and probably uh, an inch and three quarter screw. And of course a little wood glue. I'll make sure that I'm flush and also I'm referencing off a piece of half inch MDF with a nice clean surface and that just makes it a little easier to build on. I don't have to worry about whether or not this is flush because it's tight against the MDF at the bottom. Now I can use a pre-drill and countersink. and an inch and three quarter nail for a stronger connection. Did I say nail? I meant to say screw. Now that I have these parts attached to the back of the desk, I'll take a measurement and it's 21 and a half. And that's the rip for the top and bottom of the desk. I've transferred the center measurement at the back to the front of, this could be the, either the bottom or the top. And now I'm just going to add a little wood glue to the entire surface. I'll attach this piece with a few nails and then again a few screws for a better connection. While I'm attaching the top and bottom to the desk, I'd like to remind you of all the woodworking plans available on my website. With the large variety of projects and furniture styles, I'm sure you'll find something that will inspire you to spend more time in the shop.
The detailed plans, along with my video tutorials right here on YouTube, will help you make a project that I know you'll be proud of. So I hope that you'll click on the link in the description below and let me help you with your next woodworking project. Now that I have the box made, which is essentially the desk, I'm going to make molding to cover the front edge of the plywood. This is a piece of 8 quarter white oak, and if you look at this side of the board, it's not really very interesting. It's flat sawn, but if you look at this side, it's quarter sawn and just much nicer. So this is what I want to be on the face. I'll set the fence at a half of an inch, make my rips, and then reset the fence again at 3 quarters of an inch, a little heavy, and rip it again. After ripping the molding, I sent it through the sander first on the half inch measurement, removing any blade and burn marks. And when I made the molding, I did make it a little bit heavier so I had room to sand. And when I sanded the three quarter inch thickness, I sanded it until I had a perfect match between the molding and the three quarter inch birch plywood. The next step on this project is to make the drawers. And I want to make the drawers strong but really simple at the same time. And that's pretty easy to do. I'm also going to set the drawers back an eighth of an inch because it's kind of a nice design element and it also makes it much easier to set the drawers. Instead of trying to make the drawer fronts perfectly flush with the front of the cabinet, if you set them back just a little bit, like an eighth of an inch, if they're not perfect, it's virtually unnoticeable. I'm making the drawer sides front and back at a three quarter inch birch plywood. And the first measurement is three and a half. Of course, I'm going to make that just a little bit light so it fits inside the drawer box. The depth of the desk on the inside is 21 and a quarter. So I'll make the length of the sides 21 and an eighth. That's a nice snug fit, so I'll also rip the drawer fronts at the same size.
When I cut the drawers to length, I'll put the two sides in, doubled up on one side. I've already cut this. I know it's a little heavy. It's better to be heavy than light, that's for sure. And so what I want to do now is just take maybe a 32nd of an inch off of one side, and then I'll set up a stop block and cut all the drawer fronts and backs to that measurement. And that looks pretty good. Now that I have the drawer parts cut, I'm going to cut the groove to accept the drawer bottom. And I use the power Maddox saw over there for that because it has a flat ground tooth saw blade. So I'll get a nice flat cut at the groove or in the bottom of the groove. This is one of the cutoffs from the drawer sides. So it's the same width as the drawer sides and the drawer fronts. I set the fence at two and seven eighths and the blade at a quarter of an inch and made that first pass. I'll make that same pass on the drawer fronts and the drawer sides. And then I'll move the fence over an eighth of an inch at a time until I get close to a half of an inch, which is the thickness of the drawer bottoms. Once I've got a good fit with the scrap piece, I'll make the last cut on all the drawer parts. Now that I have the groove cut in the drawer fronts and sides, I'll raise the blade. The fence stays exactly where it is and the drawer backs get ripped to size. Now that I have the drawer parts made, the next step is to assemble the drawers and I'm setting the drawer backs in two and a quarter inches and that prevents the drawer from falling out of the desk. I've cut a spacer block at two and a quarter inches. I'll hold that flush with the back of the drawer and trace a line on both sides. Now I can build the drawers using a little wood glue and inch and a half nails in the nail gun. I used a wet rag to clean up any of the glue squeeze out. Now I'll take a measurement across the back. That's 19 and 7 eighths. And I'll cut the drawer bottom to size. Now I'll put a bead of glue in the drawer front. Or the groove at the drawer front. Now drop the drawer bottom into place. I'll make sure the bottom is square and then tack it in each corner. And then three evenly spaced screws at the bottom.
A bead of hot glue at the bottom and back of the drawer will help to add a little more strength. The combination of the glue joint, the brads, the hot glue in the back, and screwing through the half inch plywood into the back make the back of the drawer very strong. But I do want to add a little strength to the front, so I'll measure down an inch and a half from the top of the drawer and add one screw through the side into the drawer front. I'll pre-drill and countersink the hole so I can fill it with a walnut plug. Then I'll add one inch and a half screw. Now that I finished up with the drawers, I'm moving on to the legs. And I'm making the legs out of eight quarter, quarter sawn white oak. I'll be able to get three of the legs out of this board and one of the legs out of this longer board and then I'll save the offcuts for another project down the road. I'm ripping the legs at two and three eighths. After ripping the legs to width, I sent them through the sander to take just a little bit off all four sides, removing any blade marks, any milling marks. And now I'm going to cut these to length and I'm going to cut them a half inch heavy. The standard height of a desk is 30 inches. I'm going to cut the legs at 30 and a half and that gives me a little room to work with in case I make a mistake on the lap joint. So right now I'll set up a stop block square up one end and cut all the legs at 30 and a half. The blade in this saw has a flat ground tooth which will give me a nice smooth surface at the bottom of the cut where it attaches to the desk. I've set the blade height at an inch and an eighth and a stop block at five and a half and I'll cut the lap joint at an inch and an eighth by five and a half. I've cut the lap joint in all the legs and the next step is to make a pattern so I can start shaping the legs. This is a piece of three quarter inch plywood that I ripped at the same width as the legs, two and three eighths, and it's 30 inches long. I'll measure down from what would be the top of the leg and make a mark at six and a half. Then down at the bottom of the leg, on the inside, I'll make another mark at an inch and an eighth. I've got this thin piece of wood here that I can easily bend and I'm going to clamp it flush with this side and at the top at the six and a half inch mark. I'm going to hold this piece of wood in position and trace a line. And I'll cut this out on the bandsaw. Now 
Now I'll take the pattern and hold it flush on the outside of the leg and flush at the bottom and trace a line. Now that I have the legs marked, I can make the cut on the bandsaw. Once I get the cut started, I'll keep a little pressure on the back of the blade with the material. This helps to guide the blade along the line during the cut. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Of course, it's not perfect because the cuts are made with the bandsaw. So I've clamped the legs together at the top and bottom. I've also clamped the legs to the table. And now I'll sand them at the same time with 80 grit paper in the sander. And that should do a good job of cleaning them up. After a few minutes with the belt sander, I switched over to the orbital sander with 80 grit paper. Okay, I think that looks pretty nice. I'm going to do a little more shaping, but we can go take a look and see what it looks like on the desk. Okay, well now I've got the legs cut and sanded and I've taken a little time off camera to figure out the shaping. And I'm really happy with the way this turned out. I've got a little bit of a round over at the bottom that tapers up towards the top of the leg, a chamfer on both sides of the outside of the leg. And we'll go ahead and set up another leg and I'll show you exactly how to lay it out and mark it to get that shape. I've cut a piece of three quarter inch plywood the same thickness as the legs to prop them up a little higher off the workbench. Now I'm going to add a clamp on the lap joint at the top of the leg and clamp it down to the bench. I don't want to clamp at the bottom of the leg because it'll be in the way. So I'll add just a small bead of hot glue. Now I'll put a reference mark in the center of the leg. Then I'll measure down at the bottom and put another reference mark 5 eighths of an inch from the inside of the leg. Towards the top of the leg, measuring down from the lap joint, I'll put another reference mark at 5 inches on both sides. And I don't want to go past these marks with the hand plane. When I'm shaping the leg with the hand plane, this is kind of what I'm going for. And if you're not familiar with doing something like this, definitely try it out on a piece of scrap wood first. So I'll have this kind of a shape at the bottom and then it'll graduate up the leg and become less and less. Now I'll finish up the shaping on the inside of the leg with 80 grit paper on the orbital sander. Next I'll use a chamfer bit in the router to add a chamfer to the outside on both sides of the leg. To avoid tear out, I'm using what's known as the climb cut technique. 
That's when you move the router in the same direction that the bit is spinning. I'll remove most of the material with the climb cut and then make a final pass in the usual direction to remove the rest of the material. I decided to cut the legs with a 7 degree angle at the top and a little painter's tape will help reduce tear out and chipping while making the cut. Measuring from the bottom of the leg, I'll mark lines at 26 and a half and 28 and a half to pre-drill and countersink the holes. Okay, well now I've got all the legs shaped and sanded. I've drilled the holes to connect the legs to the desk with screws, and I've prepped the desk by filling all the screw holes and end grain of the plywood with auto body bondo. I've given the desk a good sanding, making sure there's no imperfections that could telegraph through the veneer. This is a half sheet of quarter sawn white oak veneer from Van Dyke's Restorers. They are the sponsor of this project. So a big thanks to Van Dyke's Restorers for supporting my channel. And they also supplied the hardware. I'll have a link to the veneer and the hardware down in the description below. The next step is to cut the veneer to size. I'll use a straight edge and a razor knife to cut the veneer. And I want the veneer to match as it runs around the desk. I've got a right side, a top, and a left side. And I've labeled the veneer to remind me of its position when I attach it to the cabinet. While I'm cutting the veneer for the cabinet of the desk, I'm also going to cut the veneer for the drawer fronts. And I've decided to run the veneer on the drawer fronts vertical instead of horizontal. It's just a design decision. You could run the veneer any way you like on your desk, but I think this is going to look good and we'll find out soon enough. I'm applying the veneer with contact cement. It's important to thoroughly mix the contact cement and another good tip is to line the painter's tray with tin foil. This will make cleanup much easier. I'll apply the contact cement with a mohair roller. And I like to apply two coats of contact cement to both the substrate and the back of the veneer. I think this creates a stronger bond. You'll need to allow the first coat of contact cement to dry to touch before applying the second coat. It usually takes about 10 or 15 minutes between coats depending on the weather. With the second coat of contact cement dry, I'm ready to attach the veneer to the side of the cabinet. I'll apply the veneer to both sides of the cabinet and veneer the top of the cabinet last. I'm using a board with a slight round over on the ends to apply pressure to the veneer. After trimming the veneer with a flush cut bit in the router, I'll paint both the back and bottom of the desk.
The legs are set in one inch from the front and back and attached with two inch and a half long screws. After pegging the holes with walnut plugs, the desk gets a final sanding and is ready for finish. To install the hardware, I made this simple jig to make sure that I drilled the holes straight and in the correct position. Okay, well, I'm pretty happy with the way this project turned out. And if you have any questions about this project, I'm going to try to do a follow-up just in case I didn't answer anything throughout the build. Leave those questions down in the comments down below, and I'll try to make a separate video just kind of answering some of those questions, maybe about the finish. Maybe I'll go a little deeper into the veneer process, really, whatever your questions are. You might want to build the drawers differently than I did. Uh, anything can be done. It's just this is sort of one way to do it. I am really happy with the way this project turned out and I think it's a great addition to some of the other furniture project plans that are available on my site. My goal is to really kind of come up with a line of furniture that will inspire woodworkers to get out in the shop and build the furniture for their home. And when it comes to woodworking, I think so much comes down to design. Really a a fraction of an inch can often make a piece look elegant or kind of clunky. And I'm always going for elegant. So the idea is to get these projects out there, inspire woodworkers to get out, build the furniture for their home, and really make something that they want to show to their friends. So I hope you found this video helpful and useful. And uh, remember, all of my project plans have video tutorials right here on YouTube to help guide you through the project and help you make something that I know you're really going to like. So as always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.